Greetings, everyone, and welcome to your 60-minute vinyasa flow. I am Spencer. This is the lovely Amelia. She will be our model today. And we will begin in child's pose. So in child's pose, you can have your knees out wide, toes come together, big toes come together, chest comes to the floor. We'll begin our breathing exercises in our child's pose today, beginning with mindful meditative breath. So just begin to come to your yoga head, beginning to allow all thoughts to begin to pass through. It's not quite as easy to do these days, but we're gonna ask you to take the next 60 minutes and just give that time to yourself. Give that time to your breath. Your practice today will consist of pranayama, intentional breath, asana, your yoga postures, and we'll finish our practice in Shavasana. Pranayama, Asana, and Shavasana. That is your practice. That is always your practice. Begin to allow yourself to feel the coolness of the air as it enters in through the nasal cavity. and the warmth of that same air as it exits out. Thinking about bringing the hips down to the heels and the arms out long. If you have any props, a block, strap, blankets, pillows, I'm pointing over there to the blankets and the pillows. If you wanna fill some space in here, feel free to do so. Maybe setting your intention for the practice of staying mindful for these next 60 minutes. Thinking about when you have internal dialogue that comes through your mind, how you can allow that internal dialogue to just be acknowledged and then accepted and then released. The sound of your breath right now is soft, quiet. The texture of your breath is smooth and easy. You'll use your mindful meditative breath during your practice when you're settling into your postures. And thinking about settling into your postures as quick and as efficiently as possible today. And once you get into that posture, settling in and then looking to take it that one step further if it is there for you. Yoga practice is very personal and changes from day to day, from moment to moment. Your practice and the next person's practice are completely different. Your practice today and your practice tomorrow is completely different. So just accept where you are at this moment. Try not to be self-critical during your practice but be, rather be accepting. Try not to feel overwhelmed during your practice, but rather maybe feel challenged. Now you can begin to deepen your breath as we move into our Ujjayi breath, U-J-A-Y-I-I, Ujjayi breath. Now the sound of your breath is more audible. It may only be audible to yourself, or if we were in a room with other people, it might be audible to those others. And the texture of your breath is now coarse and rough as you feel the air, the vibration of that air passing over the back of the throat. There's a little piece of tissue at the back of the throat called the glottis. You feel the vibration of the glottis as you begin to build heat. And the sound, as I said, is now audible and the texture is coarse. And you'll be using this breath during your practice when you need a little extra fire in the belly. Take three final Ujjayi breaths, making each breath deeper, extending the exhale. The inhale can take care of itself most of the time. It's the exhale where you're building strength building that length, building that exhalation. If 
final ujjayi breath. And remember coming back to this breath during your practice when you need that extra fire in the belly. And now we'll deepen and lengthen our breath even further as we move into a cleansing breath. This time, inhale deeply. At the top of your breath, pause for a count of four, three, two, one. Now the mouth opens wide as you exhale. Visualizing a small compact mirror right in front of your mouth and you're steaming that mirror. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. <sighs> Lengthening, extending that exhale and using this breath during your practice when you need that infill, influx of, of oxygen and that outflow of carbon dioxide. Inhale deeply. Pause. Sip. Pause for four, three, two, one. Exhale. Take two final deep cleansing breaths on your own, lengthening each exhale. Remembering that your breathing patterns at the beginning of our practice is what really is setting up your practice for today. This is not rest time. This is when you're getting your body ready to go. In engaging your parasympathetic nervous system. Telling your body what you're about to do. Final breath here. Pause. Exhale. Now from child's pose, we're going to extend our arms out long and now lift the hips up tall, bring the knees together and find yourself into puppy pose. So puppy pose differs from child's pose. In the child's pose, the hips are down on the heels. In puppy pose, the hips are touching the ceiling. The legs are out long. You're going to feel a little bit of an increase in your shoulder opener here. You're taking your shoulder into full extension. trying to bring the chest towards the mat. The forehead can be on the floor, or if you have it in your practice, either the tip of the nose or maybe even the chin can be on the floor. If you have cervical issues, neck issues, that might not be the best place to go for you right now. But if you don't, you can enhance your lumbar curve and your shoulder extension by bringing your chin or the tip of your nose to the floor for three, for two, for one, let's walk our hands back towards our body, find ourselves in tabletop pose, hips directly over the knees, the toes can be either rolled under or the feet can be flat, yogi's choice, shoulders directly over the elbows, elbows directly over the wrists, middle finger or index finger pointing forward. We'll take two or three cow cats here. So on our inhale, we're going to drop our belly, drop our hips, gaze is upward, accentuating the lumbar curve. And then on our exhale, we bring our chin to our chest, press into the palms and dome the spine to the ceiling for cat pose. Amelia is getting a really nice dome in that thoracic spine here now. Inhale for cow, belly touches the floor, Gazes upward, opening the throat chakra. Exhale for cow, cat. Inhale for cow. Exhale for cat. And then I invite you to take two or three cow cats on your own. And if you want to swivel your hips, move your shoulders, listen to your intuition here. Allow your body to take you where your body wants to take you. There is no right, there is no wrong. You'll do two or three and then find your way back into tabletop. Using your breath. Exhale, inhaling on your cow. Exhaling on your cat. 
and then come back to your neutral spine. The vinyasa flow is one breath, one motion. That's kind of the definition of a vinyasa flow. So pay careful attention towards your breath, do, to, to your breath during our practice. We're going to move into a thread the needle. So let's begin by lifting that left arm up tall. Gaze at that arm as it comes up tall. And then on your exhale, bring that left arm through the opening. Bring your left cheek and left ear to the mat. If it doesn't get there comfortably, you can put a block, a pillow, a blanket, or anything under there. <coughs> extending the left fingertips out long. Now, what to do with the right hand here? Well, you see Amelia has her right hand right in front of your, her nose and you can keep it there. <coughs> or she can extend that right arm up long. Take it out long first. Ah, that's right. <laughs> Take it out uh, to, above your head. Above my head. There you go. Or she can extend her head. Now she's taking that right arm into, uh, right shoulder into extension. Or, if you're comfortable, you can bend that right elbow and begin to bring that right arm behind the back and take a half bind, bringing your right fingertips towards your left hip. It, it is bright, let me see if I can. <laughs> we finally got a nice bright day today. <laughs> finally. Oh, Might even be a nice day to go out and take a little walk with your mask on. Inhale. Exhale. Now both shoulders are in internal rotation. Her left shoulder is in internal rotation going forward. And our right shoulder is an in internal rotation and adduction as well. Final three breaths here. The sun's so nice, I don't even care that it's killing me. <laughs> Final breath. Bring the right palm right in front of the nose. Press yourself up using that right hand safely. Extend the left arm up long one final time. Left arm comes back to the mat. One set of cow-cat to reset the spine. And now we'll move to the right side. Right arm sweeps up tall, slower than you would like. Exhale, bring that right arm through the opening. Right cheek, right ear comes to the mat. Again, feel free to fill that spot with a block, a blanket, or a pillow. Now you can really see that right shoulder rolling forward, internal rotation. Also at the same time, the shoulder blade, the scapula is opening here, opening up the middle and upper back. Her left arm can be out long, or she can take that left arm into a half bind. You'll get to see it really well here. As she bends that elbow and brings that left hand towards the right hip, your arm may or may not get there. Don't worry about it. It gets where it gets. You can see the real nice rotation of that right shoulder. So this is a shoulder opener. It's also a hip flexor. She has her toes rolled under, so she has her feet in plantar flexion. So a lot of different things going on here. It might seem like a fairly simple and easy posture, but you got a lot of stuff going on at the same time for three final breaths. Left palm comes in front of the nose. We'll press ourselves up using that left arm. Sweep the right arm up tall. Back to the floor. Take one set of cow-cat. And back to neutral. Now we're going to do a little work with our feet and ankles right now. We're going to take our feet and ankles into full dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So I'm going to have Amelia... Flatten the feet so that her shoelaces are on the mat, and then sit back with the heels on, with her hips onto her heels. So I'm going to show you from behind. My feet are completely flat here, so my feet are in plantar flexion. Now for some people this is very difficult, for some people this is quite easy. It depends on the amount of range of motion in your foot and ankle. As we get older or due to injury or genetic predisposition, sometimes people have more or less range of motion in their feet and ankle. But in our yoga practice, range of motion in the foot and ankle is essential. So sitting back, placing all the weight of the body onto my heels. And then let's roll forward ever so slightly. Now roll the toes under 
And now begin to sit back onto the heels. With your toes rolled under, full dorsiflexion of the foot and ankle. Back can be nice and flat. Now the first time I was ever asked to do this, to sit on my heels with my toes rolled under, I literally lasted about 10 seconds. Did you make this face? And I made that face as well. It was horribly uncomfortable for me, and it might be horribly uncomfortable for you. But practice, 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 opening up the foot and ankle joints. Eventually, I can sit here for a pretty long time now. Five final breaths. If you can't make it, if you have to come out, feel free to come out. Find your breath here. Find comfort in the posture using your breath. Breathe in to the areas of discomfort. There's a difference between discomfort and pain. If you're having pain, acute pain, come out of it, not only this posture, but any posture. But if you're uncomfortable, that's okay. Final breath. Now, keeping the toes rolled under, let's bring the hands forward, and you're gonna keep the toes rolled under and find your way back in the down dog. Now, ironically, your feet are in the same position. So, sitting on your heels with your toes rolled under gets you prepared for your down dog. Hips come up tall, you can pedal the feet out should you choose, and then come to stillness. Hips extend up tall, chest comes to the thighs, maybe bending the knees as much as you would like first down dog. Inhale, exhale, heels come towards the floor. Now from here we're gonna raise the right leg, bend the right knee, and begin to stack the hips. So Amelia's right heel is coming towards her glute, her left hip is rolled under, her right hip is rolled back. She remains in downward facing dog, upper back. Maybe she can gaze under her left arm and take a peek at her right heel. Inhale. Exhale, should you have flip dog in your practice, you can go into a flip dog here. Lifting the hips up tall, her left leg is out long, her right knee is bent for three, for two, for one, reverse your way out of your flip dog, left leg comes up, exhale, downward facing dog. We'll take this to the other side, left leg lifts up tall, now bend the left knee, now you have a good angle here, you can see the heel coming towards the glute, and that her right hip is rolling under as her left hip rolls back. One of these days, both hips are completely stacked. She remains in downward facing dog back, maybe gazing under the right arm to catch a glimpse of that left heel. And then if you flipped your dog on the right side, feel free to flip your dog on the left side. Notice she's lifting the heart. One day the chest is facing the ceiling. Her left arm is extending out long for three. Breathe for two. Breathe for one. Left hand comes down. Three-legged down dog and down dog. Pedal the feet, swivel the hips, shake it out, shake it out. And we're going to take um, a three-legged uh, high plank. So right leg comes up, hold here, and then inhale into high plank. Hold in high plank. Exhale, three-legged down dog. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, forward in the high plank. Hold here. Hips come up. Exhale, three-legged down dog. And down dog. Left leg lifts. Inhale, forward in the high plank. Hold here. Press down into the palms. Exhale, three-legged down dog. One final time. Forward in the high push-up, hold here, press back to three-legged down dog, left foot comes down, down dog. 
Now you can bend the knees ever so slightly here, take a peek to the top of the mat, and either walk or hop to the top of the mat and find your way in our first forward fold. Uttanasana, forward fold. You can grab your elbows one another here, should you choose, into ragdoll. Or you can bring your hands to the floor. Or if you're feeling already warmed up and you want to go for the heels or for the ankles, feel free to do so. Hips come up tall, crown of the head towards the floor, chest towards the thighs. Inhale. Exhale and fold. Inhale, arms sweep up tall mountain. Hands come to heart center. Tadasana mountain pose. So as we set up in our first mountain pose this morning, mountain pose, Tadasana is a rest pose. But as I always say, it is not a pose of stagnation. You are working here. So this is an active pose. Your feet can either be directly next to one another or about six inches apart. Feet parallel. Four corners of your feet grounding into the earth. The pad beneath your big toe. The pad beneath your little toe. And the two outside corners of your ankle. Palms are facing forward. This is called anatomical position. Chest is open. Shoulder blades retracted. Chin ever so slightly tucked. Tadasana, mountain pose. We'll be coming back here several times during our practice. Use this as a rest pose, but remember that it's an active pose. We'll move into our sun salutations, and as always, we'll be adding lunges in the middle of our salutations. Sun A, inhale, arms sweep up tall. Exhale, forward fold, slower than you would like. Uttanasana, inhale, hands to shins, flat back, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold and step the right foot back. You're in a runner's lunge. Notice the nice straight line from the heel all the way up to the crown of the head. Exhale, left foot back, down dog. Inhale, forward in the high push-up. Now we're going to take our first vinyasa here. You can drop your knees should you choose. Drop your knees on this one. Exhale, elbows in tight and lower. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, roll over the toes, downward facing dog. So when I say roll over the toes, when we did our hero's pose at the beginning with sitting on our toes, this preps you for that. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, step it through to the top of the mat. If the ankle is not directly under the knee, grab the ankle and move it forward. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, left foot forward and fold. Inhale, hands to shin. Exhale and fold. Inhale, arms sweep up tall mountain. We're going to set up for our first back bend. So let's bring the palms together as well as the heels of the palms together. Biceps come back towards the ears. Arms are as straight as you can get. Fingertips touching the ceiling. Press down, lift up, opening and distracting the spine, then press your hips forward. Drop your head back, open the throat, and find your first back bend. Be compassionate. To yourself, it's the first back bend. You don't need to touch the wall behind you. Exhale and forward fold. Go to where you can go. Inhale, shins. Exhale, fold. Left foot steps back. You're in a runner's lunge. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, right foot back, down dog. Let's take our vinyasa forward in the high push-up. You can again come down to your knees should you choose. Exhale lower. Feel the elbows graze against the rib cage, working on the triceps. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Press into the tops of the feet, press into the palms, and maybe the thighs come off of the mat. Exhale, roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts tall. Exhale, step it through, top of the mat. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, right foot forward and fold. Inhale, shins. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms sweep up tall. Back bend number two. You've been here once. Now you can start to go for it a little bit more. Press down. Lift up. Press forward. Drop back. Find the wall behind you. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Tadasana, mountain pose. Cleansing breath. As we set up for Sun B, we'll add Uttanasana Chair Pose. That didn't work. <laughs>
<laughs> we have a problem with our mat slipping and sliding here a little bit, so we're trying to figure out different ways. Sun B, adding chair pose. Inhale, arms sweep up tall. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, shins. Exhale, we fold and sweep our little fingers onto the floor and make our way into Utkatasana chair pose. Your arms can either be out long, your arms can be up tall, sitting down, toes may be lifting. The majority of the weight is on the back of the heels. Take a quick look. Can you see the toes? If not, if your knees are in the way, try to bring the knees back a little bit. You may feel like you're falling backwards, falling backwards, falling backwards. Exhale, fold, step the right foot back. You're in a runner's lunge. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, left foot back, down dog. Now, you can take your vinyasa a couple of different ways. You can come to your knees. You can take a traditional vinyasa. Or if you'd like to take the next layer here, maybe a three-legged vinyasa, so that if you want to take a three-legged vinyasa, the right leg would lift. Inhale forward in the high push-up. Exhale and lower. Now the right foot drops. Inhale upward facing dog. Look at that nice curve in the low back. Exhale, roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, step it through, top of the mat. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, left foot forward and fold. Inhale, shins. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweeps the arms up tall. Third and final back bend in this sequence. Go for it now. Press down. Lift up. Press forward. Find your way back. I'll give an assist here. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, shins, final side, exhale, fold, left foot steps back, runner's lunge. Notice how quietly and softly and slowly she brought that left foot back. Take your time, inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, right foot back, down dog. Three-legged vinyasa yogis, left leg lifts. Inhale, forward, high push-up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, right foot forward and fold. Inhale, shins. Exhale, fold. We sweep our fingertips onto the floor and find our way back in Utkatasana chair pose. Sitting the butt down, leaning back. Inhale. Exhale. Let's step the right foot back. You're in a lunge. Bring the hands to the heart. Drop the right knee onto the floor, flatten the foot. Inhale, elbows lift. Exhale, we'll take the right elbow over the left knee and take ourselves into a twisting lunge. So the right elbow is facing the ceiling. Maybe the gaze goes towards the ceiling. That right shoulder is coming under as the left shoulder and right rib cage, left shoulder and left rib cage come behind you. Now you can stay here. Or should you choose, you can roll the toes under on the right foot and lift that right knee. You do not have to. That's the next layer here. You can stay here or you can open your arms, pressing that left knee across the body with your right arm, gazing into the left hand for three, for two, for one. Hands come back to heart center. Come back. Right foot steps forward, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Lots of layers. You can stay on your knee in that twist. You can come up on the foot. You can open your arms. You can even go into a, uh, an arm balance, maybe a side crow, if you have that in your practice. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, arms sweep up tall. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, shins. Exhale, fold. This time the left foot steps back. You're in a lunge. Inhale, hands come to heart center. Exhale, left knee drops. Foot flattens. Inhale, elbows lift. Exhale, left elbow over the right knee. Twisting crescent. Now you get a really good look here. You can see now her right elbow is pointing towards the ceiling. Her gaze is towards the ceiling. The right shoulder coming behind, the left shoulder and left rib cage going forward. 
engaging the abdominal oblique muscles here. Now, if you're comfortable and you want to take this to the next layer, you can roll the left toes under and lift that left knee. Again, layers, layers, everybody's choice. Inhale. If you're comfortable here, you can open the arms. You'll have a really good view here of Amelia opening the arms. Notice that left elbow is pressing that right knee across the body, and that right arm is up tall. If you have an arm balance and would like to go there from here, feel free to do so. For three, breathe. For two, kicking that left heel away from you. For one, hands come back to heart center. Left foot steps to the top of the mat to meet the right. Arms sweep up tall, hands back to heart center, Tadasana, mountain pose, cleansing breath. And that's to tell me to take the cleansing breath. <laughs> Use your breath here. Oxygen in, carbon dioxide out. When you're in those types of strenuous postures, your sympathetic nervous system is kicking in. That's your fight or flight nervous system. That deep cleansing breath engages the parasympathetic nervous system, the portion of the nervous system that's responsible for calmness and equanimity. That's what your yoga practice is about. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, arms sweep up tall. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, shins. Exhale, fold. Step the right foot back. Turn that right foot 45 degrees. Windmill the arms and find your way into warrior two. So let's set up in warrior two first. Couple of things I want you to notice. First, her back leg is solid and strong. She has the majority of the weight on the outside knife edge of that foot. Maybe the arch even lifts a, lifts a little bit. That left knee is bent. The knee is over the ankle. Maybe one day the thigh is parallel to the mat. Knee is open. Arms are open. Left hand facing forward, right back. Notice how relaxed her arms are here and gazes over the left middle finger. Now we're gonna straighten that left leg. We're gonna move into triangle pose. So you might want to shorten your stance a little bit for some people, and that's fine. Don't go down until I tell you. Come forward, lean forward, arms remain parallel to the floor. That right hip is kicking away from you as you're leaning forward. Turn the palms, turn your chin to the right shoulder, and then simultaneously, left arm comes down, right arm comes up. You may have a block here. I'm going to put a block here, and you typically doesn't need it, but we'll put a block there to bring the floor closer to the body. This hip comes down, arm up straight, and notice the different triangles here. We have a triangle between the thigh and the waist and the arm. Here's another triangle. Here's another triangle in the legs. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Let's bend that left knee and bring the left forearm onto that left thigh. Arm remains up for side angle. Now there's a nice flat line from the outside edge of her foot all the way up to her hip, hip is down. And now we're gonna sunset that right arm over the ear and take this into an extended side angle. Again, nice straight line. Here's what I see a lot of times. Lift that hip up. This is what we see a lot of times is that hip comes up. So, to get that hip down, that knee has to come down, and now look at that beautiful line from the, from the foot all the way up, touching the opposite wall with your fingertips, pressing away with your leg. Now, if you're comfortable here, there's a lot of different layers you can go to. Layer number one, maybe bringing that left palm to the inside of the left foot, or coming down onto a block. Layer number two, you can take a bind here. So Amelia's gonna show you how to take that bind. That right arm comes behind the back and the left arm comes under that thigh. That's a bind. 
Layer number three, if you have bird of paradise in your practice, you can begin to walk that right foot slowly forward, find your balance, and then lift that left leg up, balancing on that right side. I'm sorry, I probably messed her up here. Hands off. And then if you're in bird of paradise and you can extend that leg, that's the gravy, that's the icing on the cake. You don't have to do that. And slowly release, find your way back to your initial layer. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, windmills us back to warrior two. Exhale, right foot steps forward to meet the left at the top of the mat. Arms sweep up tall, hands come to heart center. Tadasana Mountain Pose. So that's a sequence that has lots of potential layers. You can stay in that first layer and just stay there. There is no, there's no extra points for going anywhere further. But the more advanced and the more experienced your practice comes, the more you might want to try some of these things. If you fall out, that's great. I want you to fall out. I'm thrilled when you fall out of a posture. That tells me you're going to the edge. Now, you can go to the edge of a cliff and not jump over the cliff. You can look over, but you don't have to jump over. So wherever your comfort level is, is where you should go. Inhale, arms sweep up tall. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, fold. This time the left leg steps back. Turn that left foot 45 degrees. Windmill the arms into warrior two. Now you'll be able to see her from the back. So you see that knee is nice and straight over the ankle. Now her left foot, the outside of the outside edge of her left foot pressing away. Arms are solid, strong. Inhale. Exhale. Let's straighten that right leg. Begin to lean forward. Maybe again, shortening your stance. Lean forward, kicking the left hip back. When you get as far as you can, turn your palms forward, turn your chin to your left shoulder, and then simultaneously, look how pretty that is, as she brings one arm down as the other arm comes up. Now she can come to a block here. Again, no harm in using a block. Let your ego go. That's what the props are for. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. <laughs> Exhale, now bend that right knee, bring the right forearm onto that knee, lift the left arm up tall for side angle. Look at that nice line from the outside edge of the foot all the way up, hips, arms, and then begin to sunset that arm over the ear. Nice straight line. Beautiful. Inhale. Exhale, now it's up to you. Do you want to stay here or do you want to go to the next layer? Layer number two would be bringing the hand to the inside of that right foot or onto a block. Layer number three would be taking a bind. You'll be able to really see here. If you can't get your fingers, maybe get a, a, a strap or a little towel and maybe you can do it that way. And then layer number four would be taking this in the bird of paradise. So she's going to slowly bring that left foot in. Once she gets her balance, now she'll begin to lift that right foot up. Holding here. You can stay right here. Or you can extend that right leg out long. She's been working on this posture. It's turned into an amazing posture. It really has. It's beautiful for three. For two. For one, right leg bends, right foot comes down, release the bind if you're in there, extend that left leg out long, windmill the arms back to warrior two, inhale, exhale, left foot comes to the top of the mat to meet the right, arms sweep up tall, tall, hands come to heart center, Tadasana, mountain pose, breath.
So that sequence works on so many different things, shoulder opener, hip opener, heart opener, all at the same time, depending on what layer you're going to. And remember, it doesn't matter where you go, it's your practice. One side may also feel different from the other, so if it felt like that, that's perfectly okay. We're gonna move into our balance series, so I'm gonna ask Amelia to face the camera. We'll fix this again. Again. Again and again. I have to tape this down. Yep. And we're going to move into uh, eagle pose to start. So um, arm sweep up tall. We'll swoosh the right arm under the left, crossing at the elbows. If you can bring your hands together at Namaskar, feel free to do so. But if you can't, you can make a fist. And if you don't have that in your practice either, you can go for your shoulders. Doesn't matter where you go. Inhale. Exhale, sink. Inhale, right leg lifts up tall. Cross the right leg over the left. If you can bind your foot behind your calf, go there. But if you can't, don't worry about it. It makes no difference. Back is straight. Now, in our vinyasa practice, typically we lift the elbows. In our 26 and 2 or Bikram practice, typically we lower the elbows. Inhale. Find the balance in that left foot, four corners. If you're comfortable here and you want to move into Sleeping Eagle, slowly begin to bend forward, bringing the elbows towards the knees. Begin to make your way back up standing, uncross the legs, keep the arms in eagle arms, right knee comes into the chest, and we'll move into Warrior Three with eagle arms. Veer Habhadrasana 3 with eagle arms. I don't have enough room behind me to kick out, but you'll see what it looks like. Woo. I always fall out with, with sound effects. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale, begin to bring that knee back into the chest. Hands now come to heart center and we'll kick our leg out into Kicking Warrior. Hip flexion here, dorsiflexion of the foot, maybe leaning back ever so slightly. What's important here is the, is the integrity of that left leg, more important than how high that right leg gets. How straight is that left leg? So contract your quadriceps. That will straighten that leg for three, for two, for one, step the right foot forward about three feet. Your feet are on railroad tracks. We're gonna bring our hands behind our back. You can grab your elbows one another, you can grab your forearms or wrists, or if you have reverse namaskar, you can go there. We'll inhale, grow tall, shoulder blades come together, and then exhale, leading with your chin, make your way into pyramid pose. Right leg is straight here. You're going to feel that stretch in that right hamstring. But you're also applying weight pressure down into the left foot. So your, foot, your weight is balanced between right and left, but you're going to feel a nice stretch in that right hamstring here. Now if I bend my knee, I'm going to lose that stretch in the hamstring. But if I straighten that leg, I'm really going to feel that in there. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. If you're comfortable here on your next exhale, maybe take it another inch or so, keeping the back flat, keeping the chin up for three, for two, for one. Begin to make your way up tall, arms released, feet come together, top of the mat, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Cleansing breath. We'll move to the other side. Arm sweep up tall. Exhale, left arm crosses under the right arm. Palms come together if possible. If not, you can make a fist. If not, you can grab your shoulders. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, right leg comes up. Left leg comes up. Cross over the right, I'm sorry. 
Amelia is able to bind her foot behind the calf, but she's been doing this for years and years and years. If you can't get there, that's fine. Just let your leg hang off to the side with your toes facing the floor. Binding your foot behind your calf comes with hip opening. So as your hips begin to open, you'll have a little bit more motion there. Again, elbows can come up in a vinyasa practice. Elbows may come down in a 26 and two hot practice. Back is flat. If you're comfortable here, you can begin to bring the knees towards the, the knees and the elbows towards one another into sleeping eagle. And then on your inhale, begin to lift up tall, unbind the leg, left knee comes into the chest, And we'll begin to take our warrior three. So upper body down, lower body up, upper body down, lower body up with eagle arms. Left hip drops down, right leg solid and strong. It doesn't matter how high the left leg gets here. What matters again is the integrity of that right leg for three, for two, for one. Left knee comes into the chest, release the hands, palms come to heart center. We'll kick that left leg out long. Leaning back ever so slightly, toes to nose, engaging the plantar fascia, engaging the calf muscles, engaging the Achilles tendon. And then that left foot comes down, feet about three feet apart, both feet facing forward, hands come behind the back, grab your arms in the opposite direction than you did the first time, that'll feel weird. Inhale, grow tall, shoulder blades together. Exhale, leading with your chin. Make your way forward. Flat back. Press the shoulder blades together. I have a pencil between your shoulder blades and you're pressing it in that crease between the shoulder blades right on the spine. The little points of the spinal bones called the spinous processes. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, if you have it in your practice to take this another inch, do not lose the integrity of that left leg. Feel that left hamstring for three, for two, for one. Begin to make your way up tall. Hands release to heart center, feet come together. Tadasana Mountain Pose, <sighs> cleansing breath. From the top of the mat, inhale, arms sweep up tall. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, shins. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands and either step or hop back to a high push up. And we're going to lower down to our bellies on a count of five, four, three, two, and one made it to the floor. We'll do a couple spinal strengthening um, postures here. So let's move into our cobra pose. So we're going to bring our hands directly below our shoulders, elbows pointing towards the ceiling. Feet are flat, thighs are together, lock your thighs together, glue them together, calves are together, ankles are together, feet are together, on our inhale, we begin to gently press into our hands, but most of the work is coming from our low back here. And then press yourself up, lifting up. I'm gonna give her a little assist here. Gaze is up, chin is up. And release. Turn your head to the right, left ear, left cheek on the mat, arms come down to the side. We'll take one more cobra. So let's bring the arms back where they were again. Now, you can take cobra, or should you want to extend your arms and move yourself into seal posture, I'll demonstrate seal 
uh, Amelia will demonstrate uh, Cobra again. So my arms start at the same place. Legs are together. Inhale, lifts into Cobra. Then I'm gonna move into Seal by straightening my arms, taking this a little bit further. My gaze is towards the ceiling for three, for two, for one, and release. Gaze goes to the left, right cheek and right ear make it to the mat. So again, wherever your level of experience takes you, you can do Cobra, you can do Seal, you can do Sphinx. They're all pretty much the same. They're back bends from the prone position. All spinal strengthening exercises. Strengthening those paraspinal muscles, those groups of muscles that surround the spine going from the sacrum all the way up to the base of the skull called the paraspinal muscles, surrounding the spinal muscles. And that's what these floor exercises are doing. We'll do one more floor exercise here. We'll move into full locust. So the arms are going to come out wide into a T. Again, locking the legs together like a cobra's tail. This time the upper body and lower body are coming off of the mat. The only thing on the mat are your hips. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale begins to lift. You're pressing down into your hips, lifting the arms, lifting the shoulders, opening the throat chakra, lifting the legs, lifting the thighs for three, for two, for one, and release. Gaze goes to the right, left cheek, left ear on the mat. Practice is now slowing down, heart rate slowing down. You breathing pattern coming down back what's that you know why why you gotta say it why because you're running out of yoga you're people. running out of yoga people <laughs> and we'll do a second set of locust arms come out to a t palms down now if you have enough room in your space to put your arms out long into superman and you'd like to go there feel free to go there we don't have enough space width wise here so we'll stay with uh, locust inhale Exhale, inhale, lifts, chest up, arms up, legs up, feet up, gazes up for three, breathe, lift one more time for two, for one, and release, arms to the side, gaze to the left, right cheek, right ear on the mat. Bring your arms up to the shoulders, press yourself back in the tabletop, and then find your way onto your seat with your legs out long. We'll move into Dandasana, staff pose. In staff pose, palms are right outside of the hips, arms are straight if possible, legs are long, toes are curled back towards your nose. We're going to press into the palms, we're going to press into the calves, and see if you can lift your heels off of the mat. And release. Knees bend, come off of the mat, arms out long, we're going to move into boat pose, Navasana. Legs come up. So. You can grab behind the, let's all start together. We'll grab behind the thighs, bringing the thighs as close to the chest as possible. It's a beautiful boat pose, Navasana. If you're comfortable here, next layer, arms come out long. If you're comfortable here, next layer, you can contract your quadriceps, straighten the legs, beautiful. High boat, let's move into low boat. Hold here. Back to high boat, low boat, one final time, high boat, breathe, low boat, and then make your way to your back, to the floor, arms are out long, we'll find our rest.
As we begin to come to the end of our practice today, we'll move into a final hip opener. Let's move into a happy baby. So the legs come up tall, grabbing the either the ankles or the shins, or if you can reach the outside of the feet, you can go there. Maybe back and forth, side to side, giving one final massage to your spine. Playing here. Your hips should be nice and open right now, so go where your body tells you. And then we'll bring our knees together. We can take a, an inversion here. So if you want to take a shoulder stand or if you want to take waterfall, feel free to go there. So waterfall, grab the block for me. Sure. But we'll move Amelia into waterfall first and then she'll move into shoulder stand. So in waterfall, you'll place a block or a pillow under your hips. Legs are straight up. Soles of the feet facing the ceiling. That's waterfall, perfectly responsible, great. Um, kind of practice ending posture and then if you have shoulder stand in your practice you can go in the shoulder stand so in shoulder stand you're taking your hands to your hips legs are straight up one day the legs are perfectly straight maybe even pointing the toes some of you may have plow in your practice I don't know how much room you have here for plow but if you have plow in your practice you can bring the feet above the head maybe bringing the toes to the mat. And if you're here and you have dead man's posture in your practice, bending the knees and bringing the knees to the outside of the ears, I cannot get here personally, but Amelia can. And then begin to make your way back to shoulder stand. And then slower than you would like, begin to bring the legs back down. Stay there, knees bend. We'll take our final spinal twist. So let's take our knees to the right. And our gaze comes to the left. Her hips are stacked, her knees are stacked, her ankles are stacked, both shoulders on the floor, pressing that left shoulder into the floor. Left cheek, left ear, maybe making their way towards the mat. You may never got there, but that's okay. That's where you're going. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Knees come back to center. Exhale. Knees go left and gaze goes right. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, knees come back to center. If there is anything that you choose to do to seal your own personal private practice, feel free to go there now. Otherwise, you can begin to make your way into our final posture of our practice today. Final Shavasana. The most challenging of all of our yoga asanas, requiring stillness of mind as well as stillness of body at the beginning of practice. I reminded you that our practice consists of pranayama, intentional breath, asana, our yoga postures, and shavasana, our final regenerative rest. Use this, it's an active pose. Relax your feet, relax your calves, relax your shins, relax your thighs, relax your hamstrings. Relax your hips, relax your belly. Relax your chest. Relax your fingers, relax your hands, relax your wrists. Relax your arms, relax your shoulders. Relax your neck, relax your jaw. Relax your face, relax your forehead, relax your crown,
Relax your mind. Begin to allow consciousness and awareness to return to your bodies. You like to wiggle your toes, fingers, maybe shake your head yes and no. Coming back. Then if you would like to extend your arms above your head, perhaps bringing your hands together, clasping your fingers, taking a final stretch. And then making your way onto your right side in fetal position. And then finding your way to the top of your mat. Easy seated posture, half lotus or full lotus. Hands come to heart center, eyes closed. It is important to remember that your yoga practice is often like a winding mountain road with ups and downs and unexpected curves. Just when things seem more stable and settled, the tapestry interweaves with discouragement or the belief that we're failing. Through all of these ups and downs, the practice is simply to rest your mind and the breath, to feel it fully. Once you can experience the breath, rest your mind in the environment, feeling the air, hearing the sounds, sensing the spaciousness in your room. Then let awareness of the breath and the environment be experienced together as inner and outer holding spaces for the present moment, for whatever life presents. Rolf Gates. If you would like to join Amelia and I in a practice ceiling ohm, feel free to do so, but should you choose not to, that is perfectly okay. We'll take one deep inhale and exhale, and then a second inhale and exhale to own. Inhale. Inhale. Take our thumb knuckles between our eyebrows to our third eye and take a slight bow towards one another. The light in us honors the light in each of you. We thank you, as always, for allowing us to be your guide and teacher in our practice together today. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Namaste. 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 Thank you for joining us, yogis. We hope you enjoyed your 60-minute vinyasa flow today. And we will see you next time.